y'all know I'm a wino. I'm always sipping wine. And what I mean by sipping wine, I mean that I am subscribed to Tasha K for $12.99 a month. I subscribe so you won't have to. So recently she had did an interview with Michael Epps' first wife. Her name is Michelle McCain, formerly known as um, Michelle Epps. They have, they were married from 2006 until um, 2019. And during the marriage, they were blessed with two children, um, Maddie Epps, two daughters, uh, Maddie Epps and Mariah Epps. So Michael Epps was the one that filed for divorce. And he went on to marry his side chick by the name of Kyra Robinson. Now, prior to her interview with um, Tasha, I didn't know that Kyra was a side chick. When she was introduced to us by Michael Epps, he always bragged about her being a businesswoman, being a producer for the own network, which turns out to be a damn lie. The network has never heard of her. They have never seen her. So this was something that was just made up. And she goes on to mention that while going through the divorce, Michael was sleeping with both of them. And I honestly believe her because if you remember, Mike Epps did an interview on a podcast with Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson And during the interview, Michael, Michael, Mike Epps discussed that he has never in his life treated a woman right. And that's something that he wants to, you know, get right before he leaves this earth. He wants to start treating uh, women better. So I do believe that he was going back and forth between both women, but Listen, you got one time to tell me you don't want me. You file for divorce. Don't think you're going to bring your ass to my house thinking you're going to sleep with me and her. No, I don't think so. And what make matters even worse is that she found out he filed for divorce just like we did. She found out online. She had no clue. And what's crazy is that if she was with Mike before the fame. And it's funny how when as soon as they become wealthy, they leave their wives for women who wouldn't even give them a second glance had they not been wealthy. And not to say that Mike Epps isn't attractive because because he is, but I don't think he would have pulled Kyra had he not been rich. And I'm wondering if he was going through a midlife crisis, him being 53 and his wife, I think, is 36 or 39. The moment they get rich, they will trade your ass in in a minute for some young puss. And it's crazy because, you know, back then it was easy for us to say, oh, no, he's not leaving his wife. (laughs) Not today. These husbands are leaving their wives and the side chicks are winning. But I wouldn't necessarily call that a win because Mike Epps has been very candid about his lack of fidelity. The man said he has never been faithful. He he has never treated women right. Monogamy is not even a part of his vocabulary. And if a man cheats on his wife and then marries the mistress, then chances are he's going to repeat the pattern. So Kyra eventually, he well, he's he's already cheated on her. I mean, that's been... Um, exposed already. He's cheating on her already. And she unfollowed him. I'm not sure if they're separated, but he's not following her. She's not following him. So yeah, girl, he's going to cheat on you, Kyra. So Michelle said that Mike Epps started to get really messy and he started feeling himself getting beside himself and he was moving recklessly as if he wasn't a married man. Um, He didn't care that he was married. He didn't give a damn whether his wife found out he was cheating. He started to be seen out in public with this woman, on social media with this woman, flaunting her 
as if he still wasn't a married man. So he's a 53-year-old man, which is not old, but um, he is seasoned. Um, I think he had five kids. Now you decide that you want to treat women right and do right by them. Um, it sounds like he's looking for his hospice wife because survey said that men only settle down and decide to do right by women when they're when they have a uh, illness or on their deathbed or looking for their hospice wife. And since his dream is to treat a woman right, he should start with his first baby mama and his oldest daughter back because he said that they were ugly and that they look like um, James Brown. Now, I believe this is the same daughter that he called a bish. Um, Y'all remember there was a phone call that leaked and he called his daughter a disrespectful bish. So he did the same thing to his first baby mama and daughter that he's now doing to Michelle and her kids that they have together. So what happened was he was doing an interview and he gave a shout out to the two daughters that he had with his current wife at the time. And that was Michelle and not his oldest daughter. And she felt hurt by that. So she calls him, calls him and she tells him how she feels. And things escalated a little bit. She's yelling. He's yelling. And having been a teenager myself, I know his daughter. She was damn well disrespectful. But don't call your daughter a bish. Um, I don't care how mad you get. He wasn't listening to her to understand. He felt offended because she had the audacity to call him and say that to him. He didn't like that. And I also want to add that the new wife and the ex-wife, they resemble each other. Both ladies are gorgeous, light-skinned. Both ladies have dimples. His new wife is a clone of his ex-wife. So yes, he definitely has a type. So I am going to play a little bit of what was said during the interview and let me know what you guys think down in the comments bye yes okay like what was your darkest moment um i think i'm trying to think the darkest moment um i think when he felt comfortable because you know before on the blogs they were seen out before one time he was in new york and she was like following behind him and it, she's the same girl. So we were very married, whether she was a producer or not. What you doing following behind my husband for? Out in the streets. Of New York. I'm not there. Okay. So seeing all of this, right. And so then once he filed the divorce, when he thought it was okay to like publicly show her, you know what I mean? And, 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 and like, like we ain't like we the shit. We, you know, it was cause it was, I felt like he really tried to demean me and who I was as a woman, as a person. You don't do that to your wife. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, a lot of times people in, in the industry or just even in life, that's something sacred. That's your first wife, the woman you had who had your children. Like for you to do me like that, I'm like, girl, you don't think he'll do you like that? She motivates him differently to help push him. She's working for one of the biggest, biggest uh, 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 networks out there. Own. Okay. Own. Okay, so and, I, have a, I have a quick question. Go okay. ahead. So have you ever seen her name on any show? No. Have you ever heard of her being a producer? I, I just heard from her, her bio, that she was a producer for OWN. Now, I don't know at what level she produced. I haven't seen no TV shows. I haven't seen no credits. But I just know that she was in the right room at the right time. She probably got a nice voice piece. That's why she's able to probably get away with saying that she's a producer without people actually doing the research because she's... So, so... And they, okay, so let, let's rewind. I feel like that was a publicity stunt. Let's let's start with that. Okay, all right. Let's, let's, Any let's producer know, because I have a friend who has a lot of friends who work at home. So I said, go, go see if she works there. No, no one has ever heard of her. She ain't no producer at that. That's, that was a thing to make her look good. They met at the airport or backstage, something like that. She don't produce <laughs> anything. <laughs> that's why I'm like, 
And if anything, if anything, if anybody was motivated, I was helping writing jokes. Um, I'm like, I'm telling, I, I would speak to like, you know, they have big agencies out yeah. CAA. I'm speaking to them and his, all the different managers and all this and that. And I'm telling him, look, this is how you need to do this and that. Because I come from an entrepreneurial family mm-hmm. on both sides, my mom and my dad. So I know how to speak to people. I went to school with, I don't come from the hood. I don't come from the ghetto. I don't, I don't do food. I never did food stamps, welfare, none of that. I come from a good, you know, a good family. My mom went to FAMU. My dad went to college out here for accounting. So in LA for accounting. So I come from a family that's very smart and intelligent and we make things happen. So I came out here to be an actress. Like I've produced my own short films, movies. I've had things set up. Like I had someone write a short film and we, I co-wrote it with the person and I told them, this is what we're going to do. I told Mike, I was like, you direct it. I'm a star in it. And I was like, I'm going to have everything set up for you. All you got to do is show up and you're just going to direct it. And that's going to be a good look for you as a comedian to be a director because no comedian mm-hmm. is directing. Right. So like, this is going to elevate you in Hollywood. So that whole thing that they made her look like she's this and that. No, she's the same chick. She's just another chick trying to get on. And she <laughs> did it. 